To understand science and the scientific process, it's very important to hear a scientist explain how they made a discovery. How did they come up with the idea in the first place? What kind of experiments did they do to test that idea? Did the project go smoothly or were there bumps in the road? Did the project take twists and turns? How did they integrate all that information to come up with a new idea or a hypothesis? This is the very heart of the scientific discovery process. And it's often very difficult to get that kind of view of science from reading a textbook or reading a scientific paper. And this is what iBiology is about. We film scientists in a studio explaining their research, their ideas, their advice for students. And we make this information, these talks, freely available to anyone in the world. Let's have a look at one of these talks now. I think the effect of our experiment wasn't really a discovery. It was a psychological effect. It made the DNA seem real. Suddenly you could see bands in a centrifuge that were behaving just the way Watson and Craig said they should. And I think that the main value of the experiment was it had the psychological value of convincing a lot of people that the DNA structure had to be right. Let me say something about that molecule. This molecule essentially gave orders to a whole period in the development of molecular biology. Here's this double helix standing there. And it's saying, here I am. I have two chains. Go find out how I replicate. Here I am. I have four kinds of bases. Go figure out how that is converted into making proteins. I sit in the nucleus. Proteins are made out in the cytoplasm in eukaryotes. Go figure out what it is that takes this information from me out to the cytoplasm. My information being made up of these bases changes once in a while. That's called mutation. Go figure out how that happens. Every once in a while, there's something called genetic recombination. Go figure out how I'm... What I'm trying to say here is that if I showed you a model of, say, a polysaccharide, would it tell you what experiment you should do next? This molecule, DNA, is like the Wizard of Oz standing there, except unlike the wizard, this is a true molecule, standing there and telling you essentially the whole agenda for the future of science for the next 20 years. And of course, a great value in this kind of presentation to students is they see some of the evolution of the science, the development, the history, but they also see the human side. They see the great difference between different kinds of scientists. They might say, oh, I'm pretty much like that person. I could do that. So I think that uh, is an enormous contribution. So it wasn't a sure thing that this was going to work. Nonetheless, Gia did try the experiment, and to our great joy and excitement, it worked very nicely. This is a page from her lab notebook that day, approximately one month after she entered graduate school, where she found strongly fluorescing E. coli and took this picture. This was very exciting for us because they said, aha, this really would be a potential way of solving this problem of DNA is getting shorter and shorter because now here's a way of making DNA get longer. So we had an enzyme activity which was working in the test tube and adding nucleotides that corresponded to the telomeric DNA sequences to the ends of chromosomes. And, and uh, we had to name this enzyme because we couldn't say tetrahymenothermophilotelomere terminal transferase too many times. And, uh, and so um, there was a bit of a, a kind of discussion through the lab, and actually Claire Wyman in my lab came up with the name telomerase, which we thought kind of made sense, because here was a telomere, uh, the telomer, and then ase uh, sounds like an enzyme. And we were thinking of polymerase, uh, polymerase, where, you know, a polymerase is something that makes a polymer. So we said, well, here's telomerase that makes a telomere. So we were happy to add this new word, which uh, eventually made its way into the dictionary. iBiology is a wonderful forum to get research spread around the world on the internet, and I find it extremely useful. In particular, I also cite it at the end of my seminars so that folks can go and find out a little more detail of what we do. And in reverse, you really get a better feel for the dynamics of what are happening. Watch this ring develop around the eye. That's 5 million chromatophore organs innervated directly from the brain. And now you see the patterning occurring in the skin right here. And then I draw your attention right here to the smooth outline of the body. 
and you notice that it goes three-dimensional as well. In iBiology, you can uh, watch amazing scientists talking about science, talking about career paths, talking about their struggle to become scientists and the joy of being scientist. Moreover, it's important to remember that not every scientist is a math whiz as a grade school student. That there are lots of ways to become a scientist and lots of ways to be a scientist. I decided I wanted to be a scientist when I was nine years old. I actually think that I didn't decide I wanted to be a scientist. I decided that I wanted to continue to explore things, take them apart, see if I could put them back together. And I was asking myself, what do I really want to do in life? And I started asking my, that question because my mother always said to me, it doesn't really matter what you do. What's most important is that what you do, you do it well. And she would then add, but I'd like you to do something that has a positive impact on society. And I thought, you know, what can I do that has a positive impact on society? And I felt I could do that better as a scientist than I could do that as a dancer. This is the place between Mexico and the United States where I actually have defense. We're looking at it from the American side, and this is the exact place where back in 1987, I looked and tried to find my own good luck. I get to do and use the most sophisticated equipment in the operating room because I believe that my role as a physician and surgeon and scientist is not only to give hope inside of the operating room, but also outside of the operating room through our work. I grew up in Puerto Rico. Like most people in the world, I didn't have direct access to scientists. And where I think um, iBiology is a game changer is that it gives people like me that are interested in science, that are part of the international community, or even communities here in the U.S. that might not have direct access to academic centers, the opportunity of hearing about the passion, of hearing about the discoveries in science from the actual protagonists that are producing the knowledge. I go to a really small college in Arkansas, and having a resource like iBiology is very enlightening and beneficial for me and my fellow students. So I've been teaching in Sub-Saharan Africa a couple of uh, intensive workshops for the last six years where we take local students and teach them basic concepts of cell biology. Um, we've incorporated the iBiology seminar video series into our teaching because it gives us the opportunity to bring the world's leading experts in various cell biology topics right to the local African students. That's great for them. We show the videos. We often pause in the middle of the videos in order to go over key concepts. And then what's really special about this is that the students can then take those videos back to their home institutions and show the same seminars with the same commentary and um, elaborate on the same concepts that we do. Bringing the, the developed world into the education environment of the developing world. It's been particularly useful for us and we'll continue to use them for years to come. For a student like myself, there's a lot of useful career advice on the iBiology website. My fears have taught me an important general lesson about life. And first of all, don't be disappointed when you fail. I mean, uh, the great thing about US society is good failures are encouraged and not a disgrace. Because that means you're trying something new and hard. If you have many ideas, some are likely to fail. And you can't be afraid to fail. I talk to so many students, and there's this tremendous paralyzing fear of failure, which I don't fully understand why it's so pronounced, but it is very strong. And it's important to be aware that you have these emotions if they're there, and don't be afraid to fail. Some would argue that, in fact, you should try to fail. Because when you actually fail, you understand what your limitations are. And when you know where your limitations are, you know what you need to work on to overcome them. I'm an undergraduate student, and I love iBiology because it bridges the gap between what you learn in class and what you need to talk to a scientist. 
I've been teaching microscopy for 25 years. Last time, I tried something new. I asked my students to watch iBio microscopy lectures every week before they came to class. And then during class, some magic happened. There was an amazing torrent of questions and really interesting discussion. I am convinced this was my most effective year ever of teaching microscopy. I'll just give you a uh, one example of uh, the application of STORM to image uh, microtubules. As you can see that in this case, uh, this is a white field image of uh, microtubules so where all the fluorophores are turned on, so it gives you a smeared, uh, uh, poorly resolved image. Now, if we activate a small subset of molecule at a time, and then uh, because they're well isolated, we can pinpoint their positions. We plot their positions uh, in the right-hand side. And then after enough accumulation, we can see this type of uh, storm images of microtubules. And you can see in comparison with the conventional image of the same field of view, there is a drastic boost of uh, resolution. I'm a lifelong learner. And stated simply, when I want to learn something new, the first thing I do besides Google something, is to go to iBiology and to type in the subject that I'm interested in and then just listen to the lecture from the professional. It's, you can't beat it.